Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to look at making the most of your Terramaster NAS when it comes to multimedia. Now in this series of videos I'm going to be straight with you. This is one of the shortest entries in this video series I'm going to make. We've mentioned several times in other videos that the Terramaster platform for network attached storage is arguably the more cost effective end of the market. And although they have improved vastly in TOS 5.1's general standard of services, while at the same time providing a great level of hardware for the price point, it has to be said that when it comes to multimedia, they aren't really breaking much ground compared to a number of their competitors. And really, on the Terramaster platform, these are the only things you can do. In the application center, you'll be able to see on the left hand side that if we go to all applications, click the one at the top, select multimedia, you'll see that there's only four applications. Now, MB and Plex, we're not going to be covering today. Plex Media Server will be in its own dedicated setup for 2024 video very, very soon. But today we're going to be focusing on multimedia server and Terraphotos. But again, with Terraphotos, it's a beta, it's still very much in beta, and although they're stating it has rolled into version 2.0, I still don't think it's quite right to call it finished by any regard. So though we will be covering it, unfortunately, it's really probably going to change over time. Now, once you've uploaded your data to the NAS, and again, in previous tasks, we've talked about the ability to upload data, put it in very specific files and folders for you. Having the data on the NAS, your photos, your music, your video is only half the challenge, isn't it? Because once you're in trying to enjoy the media on your mobile phone, your desktop computer, your audio server, your Sonos sound system, your Amazon Fire TV, whatever it is that you want to enjoy on, chances are you're going to need it in a very specific fashion. And that is where the application multimedia server comes in. Not a SCSI server, sorry, we want to go to multimedia server. A multimedia server not only allows those folders that you specifically target for photos, video, and music to be streamable locally over the network environment, but also allows you to utilize the hardware surrounding it that little bit better. So for example, if you're using a NAS that's got multiple LAN ports, what you can do is bind a specific port to multimedia. And what that means is, if your NAS is connected to your router or switch via multiple cables, rather than one 1 GBE or 2.5 GBE connection being oversaturated by everyone who might be trying to stream 4K movies natively, and then for your backups could suffer or vice versa, you can bind specific connections to multimedia if you need to. The same goes with ports and choosing those specific directories that we've talked about for indexing. In the control panel, you select where exactly you want your media to come from. If you need to find this folder, just head into the control panel, let's find it natively. Go into the control panel option and then from the control panel, so if we go in, from there go in and then the second row, multimedia index. From there, enable multimedia indexing. Whenever it senses data has been uploaded to these folders, it will re-index and click the plus symbol. The plus symbol, select a folder on the NAS that you know contains multimedia. So say we go for a USB share drive here, click confirm. And then from there, state what kind of multimedia is in this folder. Is it music? Is it photos? Is it videos? Is it documentation? This indexing will effectively keep a record in the back end of the Terramaster NAS to know where certain data is and what kind of data is in individual folders. And therefore, bind that applicably to tailored applications that need it there. Once you've done that, you can change some of the filtration and the thumbnail generation there. And as you can see, by default, we've got enable photo and video thumbnail generation. Now, this is disabled by default, something I find really bizarre. Why is that bizarre? Because it means a lot of users don't realize that they need to select that option. The result is they'll open up an application like Terra Photos, which in itself is a great tool. And given the, the branding here behind uh, the AI photo recognition here is very, very good. If you don't enable that option, this is what you will see because thumbnails are not being generated and also bear in mind that your web browser may have difficulties displaying certain thumbnails so ensure that one you enable thumbnail generation by default be ready that will trigger a re-indexing probably and if it doesn't you can action re-indexing and rebuilding the database if you choose 
or alternatively within the photos application you can go into the settings menu and reaction some of that indexing as required there and again all of the options we talked about are available in the photos application anyway for you to add new directories if you choose there and it will filter straight in to that option there so again nice easy options there and if you're going to be accessing via dlna digital living network alliance devicing or upnp universal plug and play devices this will allow that multimedia to be found by those connected local area network devices this does not extend to remote access devices that are on a different network i.e a completely different internet connection before we move on, it is worth highlighting that there are a couple of little extra nuggets that we should really touch on when it comes to multimedia and its handling and the bolting down of some of that multimedia for more power efficient Terra Masters. So for example, if we go to the compatibility tab, we can ensure that certain audio formats that are a little bit more complex and bandwidth and resource intensive can even be enabled or disabled for transcoding and reformatting on the fly. So if one of those sounds specific to your audio needs, particularly dense FALC or FLAG more uh, audio, you can enable or disable that as needed. The same goes with video transcoding. You can either enforce transcoding at a certain level or ensure that transcoding doesn't take place. And if you are concerned about multimedia being network accessible and you don't want it network accessible, but rather use third-party applications with remote level access, you can actually disable specific devices. So you can search your local area network and add individual MAC addresses as they're found and ensure that they cannot access your multimedia if you choose to, which is a handy little extra. On top of that, you can go ahead when it comes to the audio formats and changing some of the smaller options with handling some of that multimedia there. Alternatively, if you're concerned that a device on the local area network could pose a hazard or a security risk to your device and it intends to use UPnP or standard DLNA to at least access data for retrieval, head into the control panel. From there, go into the security tab and then from the security tab, you can, if need be, in the most worst dire case scenarios, enable isolation mode. That will, and we'll go into more detail on this in another video, allow you to sever all remote access to the system and requires a full system restart. However, the security threat posed by DLNA and UPnP in your network is low to almost zero. It's only externally when combined with remote opening of ports where that can pose a problem. But let's move on. Now, as it stands, there isn't actually an application currently available that's a dedicated TerraMaster video app. If you want to enjoy multimedia on, say, a smart TV or a TV using an Amazon Fire Stick, you can go ahead and get VLC or MX Player for Fire TV quite easily. And that tool will allow you to stream uh, over the local area network from your TerraMaster NAS. And again, the same goes with MX Player, but I tend to find that on uh, connected streamable devices, VLC covers the larger gamut of codecs. But bear in mind, the user interface is a little clunky for your smart TV. When it comes to the mobile application, you can go to the TerraMaster download section and find different downloads that include the mobile application that you can download to access the data on the NAS. But again, that is more of an all-rounder app than it is any one that's dedicated to videos or music or, uh, for that matter, photos. Now, on the subject of photos, the TerraPhotos application, although we're going to talk about it, it's worth highlighting. Again, it is in beta but one of the main reasons people like this app is finally TerraMaster buyers have got AI photo recognition that is when you upload lots of photos of people albums that you've had over the decades to the system and it will go through and find faces that are similar then you can name those faces and then moving forward once you upload more photos it will recognize those faces however I will say as this is in beta and I'll try not to be too critical the AI photo recognition on the TerraMaster still leaves a little bit to be desired. I know for a fact that I've uploaded quite a large number of photos here. And whereas AI photo recognition on other brands has recognized uh, my face a great deal more and in larger frequency with the exact same databases, fewer photos have arrived here on this system. So for example, once I've named myself there, 
click confirm, I can still merge photos of me from the rest of the system if I wish and merge those together over time. But still nonetheless, there is actually a, gr a lot more photos than just five photos of me in this album. To put that into perspective, if we go into the photos album and we look at Christmas, there is a lot more photos to play with. Sadly, as we can see, thumbnail generation is still unoptimized in the beta version of this app. And although they're getting there, thumbnail generation has always been something of a hurdle when it comes to photo recognition and indeed photo streaming on a NAS system. Now, as we look into this, we can find out a little bit of information about these. We can download these photos if we choose, or if we right click an individual photo and find out more about it, we can get some of the real time information from the back end of uh, Terra photos here. Again, we can find out more here on the side and find out properties about individual photos, a little bit more about some of the background information, you know, with regards to the metadata that has been scraped. And again, you tend to find photos from mobiles to have a great deal more information to play with there. But that's really about it. And the fact that it's conglomerated the videos in as well does mean that although I can, you know, I can vouch that this will. Uh, at the very least, crawl and index uh, the videos on your TerraMaster NAS system. Thumbnail generation still does leave just a little bit to be desired there compared with what we're seeing here on screen. And if we go ahead and play certain files there, this is an 8K file, for example. An 8K file, absolutely huge. We can go in, find out more information about it. If we select that file again, cancel that out i can assure you we are still talking about a fairly significantly scaled file so it's definitely able to do the job and it's an 8k vp90 file there and this is a very capable one our system with its i3 processor but still nonetheless i find it difficult to recommend this and although you can follow these steps to uh, sort out your multimedia on your terra master it's really at the moment using this beta app quite troublesome to do that now in the settings menu Make sure you've enabled AI photo recognition, of course, and on top of that, you've selected the right categories there. Also, showing the photo name and all this extra stuff isn't really that necessary. On the other hand, well, if you want to share photos, well, unsurprisingly, if we select an individual photo here and we want to share that photo, we can do it from within the photo to share it directly, or we can go ahead, select the image at the top, select the share icon there, and then from here, we can choose whether we want to share it to individual users or an external share if we've enabled remote access to the TerraMaster NAS. Add time limits, passwords, and more. You can even make sure it's read only or read and write if need be. And also, you can enable it so that users can share and upload their own uh, photos to the system if they choose to. It's really that straightforward. It's just a shame that the amount of metadata scraping and the amount of AI photo recognition uh, and video handling in TerraPhotos as it stands is still very much a beta proposition. But this has been how to handle your multimedia on a TerraMaster NAS. Again, I look forward to showing you guys more with Plex and MB and how to set those up ideally in 2024 soon. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Again, free advice section if you need it, NAS Builder if you need more help, community forum if you need even further support, and head over for Zoom consultations and expediated support if you need them over on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.